we know the the hype surrounding him. Pe- people in baseball understood how important it was when he arrived on the major league stage and how disappointing frankly it had been the first two years in the major leagues despite the fact that he was fine but we expected this and now we're getting this and yesterday in particular that performance what what does that do around major league baseball how how wide sweeping are the reverberations of that three homer game oh it's huge it's a huge story i know we're going to be talking about it today on MLB Network and and all around uh, the sport because we are now seeing a player who truly, to me, looks like he's fulfilling that Miguel Cabrera-esque potential that we had forecasted for him. He is now at that position where he's hitting the ball to all fields. He's understanding with a lot of maturity when he's being pitched to, when he's not. And I think this all comes from understanding physically and mentally that he did everything he could to put himself into this situation with the work he did during the off season. I think as, and again, I'm, I am not an athlete. I just talked to them, but it, it does seem to me that when you have done all you can do, there is an intrinsic knowledge of that, that, that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has to be very proud of himself for what he did during the winter. And he's taking that confidence and that security, that self-assuredness, to the plate whereas last year physically mentally he wasn't quite aligned now he is and now the the talent is flourishing for all of us to see and and to your point it it is part of an overall conversation about the young stars in the game whether it's Tatis whether it's Otani whether it's Vlad Jr. we've got a lot to work with here and I think with all due respect to the NFL draft conversation we had a moment ago this is a nice month you know the NBA playoffs haven't started yet the NHL playoffs haven't started yet. This is a really nice window for baseball to reintroduce itself to a lot of fans. And you could not put together a better sizzle reel, as we call it in the business, than what's happened with some of the young stars over the last couple of weeks. I think that's a really great point. And if I'm being really honest and, and trying to be smart about it, the way that baseball is hoping to market itself right now is as this refreshed product that has a bunch of young stars. And really all of these young stars and having a depth of young stars is more important than anything, right? Having Tatis in Los Angeles or in San Diego, having Otani in Los Angeles, having stars littered throughout the league, Acuna, Vlad Jr., Bichette, right? Having a bunch of different guys in different markets because it is a regional sport and you need to have it so that everybody kind of has a guy. And that is the way they want to push it. That's the way that it's clearly the directive of the marketing. You look at how popular Tatis is, how he's already one of the faces of the game. But with Vlad Jr., I tried to outline this case earlier in the show, and I don't know how how we essentially gauge these things, but my case is is that none of these stars are as important to baseball as Vladimir Guerrero Jr. One, he plays in the American League East. Two, he plays at his, the majority of his games at 7 o'clock, so Eastern time zones when people are actually like mostly still up and able to watch these games. He's got the name, he's got the pedigree, he's got the cool factor, he's got the look, and he's obviously got... Yeah, the name Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I, 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 I just I look at him and I compare him to these other guys and I say, okay, they might be better and they might have better careers and they might have more valuable positions. But when it comes to baseball and the way that it's going to market itself over the next five years, do you think that anyone, if they are to meet their ceiling, meet their trajectory, there's anyone more important than Vlad? It's a great question. Uh, I, a, a couple things. I, I would say that Otani, because of the uniqueness of what he brings, if he can become Babe Ruth 2.0, <laughs> which is just amazing to say, um, it, it, that to me is a chance to change the game in a pretty profound way. Because one of the problems that we have in the U.S. right now is the, the, the sports specialization. And even within the sports specialization, mm-hmm. the skill specialization, you have to be a pitcher. You have to be a hitter. You have to be a baseball player, full stop. You can't play this other sport. And Otani proves that all of that is a false narrative, that you do not need to make that choice. You do not need to choose even pitcher versus hitter at the highest level. And that's pretty cool. That is a way of reframing, I hope, I hope, a lot of the narratives that you get from travel ball coaches and high school coaches and college coaches 
about the need to restrict and refine what you do. So I think because of that potential, Otani stands apart. He, he really is. He has a chance to be a global sports phenomenon. But Vlad has extraordinary potential. And when you're the son of a Hall of Famer, you have that built-in potential. Tatis, of course, uh, is the son of a major league player. There is a built-in potential and awareness there. And I think for Vlad, because of the connection, and obviously within Canada, when you think about what his father meant to Montreal, and you even go back to a few years ago, the home run that Vlad hit at Olympic Stadium, that was a special moment. I mean, we were all buzzing about that for a while. It was really, really cool. So I, I think from that standpoint, Vlad has extraordinary potential. I almost don't want to compare and say it's less than, greater than with Tatis, but he has the ability, especially within Canada and certainly within the Eastern Division, to reframe and grow the game in a lot of really powerful ways. Yeah, and we do this all the time about free agents choosing or not choosing to come north to the Blue Jays or the Raptors, that, yeah, it's a, it's a lifestyle thing. But once you get here, we're pretty good at making stars uh, because there's a lot of eyeballs in this country whether it's DeMar DeRozan in the consecutive All-Star games and Kyle Lowry or Josh Donaldson winning an MVP up here, that there's, once you get here, pretty good at uh, improving your star power. 